it's a great honor and a privilege to introduce a very close and dear friend for many years, Yehuda Kleiner, who is 83 years young. We are here in Renana in Israel. Tomorrow night is Yom HaShoah, uh, where we commemorate um, what happened in the Holocaust in the Shoah. And we have a very special, very special friend of mine. Yehuda is an outstanding philatelist. Um, we have known many years. And Yehuda has a story which is absolutely unbelievable. Yehuda came to Israel as a small boy and left Germany, thank God, before the war in 1938. Mm -hmm. So Yehuda, over to you. I'm sure all our listeners out there are, are just fascinated to hear your journey, your okay. story, and the miracle, thank God, that you came, that you left Germany in time. Right. We did, we did live in time, and the story is... I think unusual. Can I, I ask, was to begin, you, uh, you know, which which town or city were you born in? Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you. I was born in 1934, uh, and we lived in Breslau. Breslau is in the east of Germany, and after the war, it was in a way you can say it was returned to Poland. Now it's Poland, and and it's called Wroclaw. But at the time, it was authentic German town. Now, my father was a physician of skin diseases and venereal diseases. And uh, he had his practice in, uh, in Breslau. And uh, one day uh, in the beginning, I think it was in 1938, the police commander of that city came to him and he told him that, can you help me? I have syphilis. Wow. Now, at that time, before antibiotics, syphilis was more or less a dead certificate, if I may say so. It was lethal. It was yeah, it was, uh, it was lethal. It was lethal. And my father, as a venal doctor, I don't know how he succeeded to um, to cure English to uh, to uh, to cured, cure him to cure him to cure him. After a while, the uh, this police commander joined the German Nazi Party and became a, a figure in the local SS. And uh, one night, uh, of course, I know these things uh, I, from the, the story from my father, because I was a little boy and I didn't understand anything at the time. And he told my father, listen, tomorrow, in two or three days, it's the time that we take the Jewish physicians to concentration camps. The way they did it, they, they, they collected the Jews in Germany, they do, did it by professions. And they started with intelligentsia. Why? Because these people could arrange a, a defense. They could arrange a withdrawal or whatever. So there was a day for the physicians and there was a day for the lawyers and the day for the bankers etc etc and you heard that this was in 1938 in 1938 and how old were you at this time four you're four years old four. it was the beginning of 19 do you have any recollections no. of you were well I, I i i have a recollection of 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 the house we lived in i think i remember the street sprudelstrasse wow Anyway, uh, and he suggested to my father, listen, I owe you because you killed me, but it's a big danger for me what I do to help you, but I still want to help you, and I suggest that you immediately leave Breslau and, and, and go somewhere else so that we don't take you, that we don't find you. It's a day when we collect the local physicians or doctors. The local Jewish. Physician. The local Jewish, of course. Now, my father had a brother who lived in Berlin. He was called Marcel. This guy was an adventurer and he was a communist. Now, as you probably know, that the Nazis also persecuted uh, the, the communists. And 
to our luck, he was responsible for the uh, uh, flight or eviction of communist party members from Germany, so that they're not being caught by the Nazis. He, in a very short time, gave my father two forged Czechoslovakian passports, one for my father, one for my mother. And uh, this was before Hitler entered into Czechoslovakia. So my father was clever to buy gold coins, and he had many gold coins with him, and we fled to Czechoslovakia. This I remember. We, we, we took a flat in, in, in Prague. Now, there's something funny. How did you go to Czechoslovakia? Yeah, we did go to Czechoslovakia. By train or...? I don't remember how. I don't remember. Maybe by, maybe by car or by train. Okay. Now, there was something which, uh, I can, which amuses me that my father told me, because when we came to the Czech border and my father gave the forged uh, Czechoslovakian passport, the uh, local uh, clerk at the, at the border asked, started to, to talk to him in Czech. And my father didn't understand the world. So he asked, the clerk asked him, well, I don't understand. You are a citizen of Czechoslovakia and you don't understand me? So uh, my father wasn't confused. He took out a few golden uh, coins, put it on the table and said to the clerk, this is my Czech language. Wow. And the, the, the clerk was very happy, he took it and he, he waved with his hand, you can, you can enter. So that kind of saved uh, your this life? This saved our life. Now, what happens to these passports? After my parents uh, uh, died and I inherited uh, the, uh, the passports, also some of the gold coins, I'll talk, talk about this later, I have two daughters. And I gave each of, of my daughters one passport with a story, so they know. So they have the passports now. Can I just ask, and were you the only child? Or you had, yes. There were I no was, brothers or sisters? No, because my parents were already very, quite, uh, <laughs> quite uh, not old, but, mature, but uh, they were not young when, when they married. So I was the only, I was the only child. Uh, anyway, uh, we stayed for a while in Prague and uh, my father somehow arranged to transfer money to Palestine and buy certificates from the British. But we had to reach uh, Trieste because the, the ships to Palestine, to Haifa, they went from Trieste. And there was a problem. How do we cross the borders from Czechoslovakia to Trieste. Trieste is in northern Italy. Northern Italy. So, and my father, uh, he, he was by birth, he was an Austrian and he knew Austria very well and Austria has a, a border with, with Italy. So, what, uh, what we did, my father, uh, he had money with him. This is, this is, this is our luck. And uh, he, he bought a car, and we went by car. At that time, this was before the war, so it was a no, there was no problem to go from Czechoslovakia to Austria. But there was a problem to go from Austria to, uh, already, for Jews, from Austria to Italy. So we crossed the, 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 by foot the Alps, and this is, I became very ill then, I nearly died. I, I became very ill and... Uh, you were only four years old. Four years old, I got a lung infection, and this is why I am recognized because of that. And I had a certificate that I was very, very ill uh, as a Holocaust survivor, mm -hmm. because of this, 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 this little pass that we went through the Alps and it was in the winter, it was cold and, and, and my mother... You, you showed me the, your card. I showed you the card. You want to see it? I'm recognized by, by the finance ministry and I get a small allocation as a Holocaust survivor and I got medi medication free, which I need for my blood pressure. 
And do you remember when you were in the Alps? Do you have any recollection of... Yes, from the Alps, and we, we, when we, how we went oh. through. And what if you could show to our this is, this is a, this, this is a card which is saying Holocaust survivor, number so and so, Yehuda Kleiner, issued by the government of Israel, by the Ministry of Finance, and by the um, Irgun, Irgun, by the organization, by the foundation of the Holocaust survivors, something right. like that. And uh, eventually, we reached uh, we reached Trieste, and. Uh, because we got certificates from the British, we we came to 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 Palestine in 1938. But the two two more stories to to add to it. Do you remember going on the boat from Trieste to Las I Africa? remember something, but not not you really. Were... Four years old. That is uh, that is uh, it's difficult. Uh, sometimes uh, I things are coming back. When I, when I think about it, and I think about my parents, of course, they both died some time ago. But uh, there are two more stories which I want to tell about it. You see, my, my, we, we came to Israel, it was soon after that, 1938, 1939, the war started. We didn't know the language. It was not easy to integrate because we were uh, considered to be Europeans or Germans, even Germans, you see. And uh, I, I, I suffered because of that, because it, the, the local children didn't, didn't like me very much because of that. And my father did integrate very well. My, my mother never, never overcome the flight from Germany and one of the things before she died that she told me when she she she, she kept the gold coins these were sovereigns British gold coins and called uh, sovereigns each coin today is worth about 350 to 400 dollars okay. and she gave me the the coins and she told me listen you'll be hungry you will have nothing to wear you, your wife will be miserable. You will have no place to sleep where to sleep. But you never touch these coins because one day you will need to run again and they will save you. Wow. She, the trauma of running uh, from Germany, it, somehow she couldn't uh, overcome it. It stayed with her. My father was no problem. The other story is one day I come, come back from school and the huge woman is standing before the door at as our flat in Tel Aviv. No, my father was working, my mother was working, so I had the key, there was no woman. And I didn't, I never saw such a huge woman. I, I, I'm joking, I mean, if you go behind her on the street, she covers the sun. <laughs> And this is what she said, it saved her in Auschwitz because she wow. was so strong. And I asked her and in, 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 I, I saw the number on her, uh, on her um, oh. arm. So I talked to her in German and I asked her, who are you? And she said, well, I'm your aunt. My name is wow. Marta. She was married to Marcel, the, the brother of my uh, father, the, the one... The communist. Uh, the communist, who the one who gave us the passports. The Czech passports. Uh, he was caught, and he, she was caught with him. And uh, she was detained in Auschwitz. And because she contaminated the German blood because she was a Goya, a German. A non-Jew. A non-Jew, non that she married a and Jew. She, wow. And therefore they, they put her to Auschwitz. But she, I never forget that. Uh, during lunchtime, well, of course, I rang my father and I asked him, who is it and what and what? He said, no problem, I didn't know she, she's coming very well, Martha. 
take go take her in, go to the, uh, the uh, offer her if she wants to drink or to eat. Anyway, in the evening and during dinner, we are sitting on the balcony. I never forget that. And she took out from a small bundle, maybe eight or ten or twelve crystal crystallized salt items or crystal, crystal, crystallized salt, crystals of salt. And what was her story? She didn't say it was Mengele. She said that they, the Germans wanted to see how much a German pilot, which is shot down over the sea and he has no sweet water, how much how much can he survive by drinking salt water? Wow. So they forced her to drink salt water. And the crystals didn't, didn't solve, didn't resolve in it her didn't body. Dissolve. It didn't, didn't dissolve. resolve. They stayed in her body. Luckily, this was somehow before, a short time before the Russians Cruel. Freed, freed, uh, freed uh, Auschwitz, and she was taken to an American hospital, and she was operated, and all the crystals were taken out of her body. And it, she came with a German, German Jew. She became somehow friendly with him, and she didn't really know where we are living in Israel, but he went to his family in, in Tel Aviv and he started to ask where is Dr. Kleiner living, Dr. Kleiner, and this is how she got our address and came. Uh, eventually my parents tried to help her, but uh, there was not, not much to do with her. It was 1946. No, no, and she didn't know the language. She had no profession. She was an Aryan or a, a, a non-Jewish. So eventually she went back to Germany and she got a post as a housekeeper for, with some rich family there. And of course, I didn't have any connection with her. Did your parents still have a connection with her? Yes, with letters, with letters. And that says, otherwise, the rest of the family, they all, you see, my father was a, a, an officer in the Austrian army in the First World War. And the, the German Jews, they, they, they fully integrated into German society and they, they acquired the German culture. They didn't believe that anything would happen to them. Yeah. And, that is, and they stayed until it was too late, not all of them. Some came. Uh, Yehuda, and, can I ask, what, and, what uh, happened to Marcel? To Marcel? Oh, yes, Marcel was caught. And I don't, we don't we, I can't imagine what they did to him. A Jew, a communist, a, a smuggler of communists outside Germany. Did you ever hear from him again? No. But there is something else. Oh. Hello. Beseider, yes, Lipo. You heard it coming back to your father's brother Marcel. Did your did your parents ever manage to find no, out what happened no, to him? No, no. Even Martha didn't. His wife didn't know. They took him and he vanished. Uh, and did Martha ever remarry? Not that I know. Not that I know. Maybe, maybe. But uh, 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 there's something else that is worth uh, telling, I think. Um, did no, your I family I... have um, your parents, their siblings, did they remain in Breslau or in Germany? What, my parents? The, the, the immediate family, the brothers or sisters? They, they went, they, they remained in Germany. Some, some escaped to Russia, but I think that they died in the Russian camps, because they, they, the labor camps.
Conditions were very harsh. The conditions were very hard and, and they were physically not so fit. So it's a sad because I was alone, no brothers, no sisters. And after my, uh, my parents died, I was, that's it. So you have no relatives? No. I, I mean, I have two daughters of my own mm -hmm. and a wife, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 sure. uh, but that's it. And your grandparents? Your grandparents remained in, in Germany? Yes. yes. And they were also... They were taken and... And killed. Yeah. This, wow. is, this is sad. This is sad. Grandparents. Yeah. So, thank God your, your father had the insight to yeah. get the Ah, I know what I wanted, my father. After the war, some years, I think uh, it might, might have been in the early 60s, my father went to Germany to find this guy who warned him. The, the, this, the, the, he German, the German... His, pa SO, his the, patient who he... he yeah, the patient. Uh, but he didn't find him. He, 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 and... and, and uh, and when he tried to, to through official people or, 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 or through the municipality, whatever, they <coughs> they didn't cooperate. They didn't cooperate. My father thinks that he probably he. You see, I know it is known that the SS people or or, or, or soldiers especially officers, they had a tattoo, SS, here. And possibly if he served in Russia and the Russian caught him, I mean, <laughs> there was no court martial, poof, finish, yeah, an SS man. He probably <laughs> was killed, I, I think. But, but my father wanted to thank him. But he never find him. That's, uh, so that's my story. And did, did your mother go back with your father to Germany? Yes, they went back to Germany. They got reparations, you know, like all yeah. the, the, the Jews from Germany. And uh, they got German passports. Also, I, I didn't want to get this passport. And I told my parents, listen, it's not, it's, 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 if I take the passport, I'm becoming the citizen of Germany. I don't want that. Okay. Yeah. And the funny thing is that uh, now I'm going on a mission together with an, about five pairs from the city of Ranana to our sister uh, municipality, sister town or city in Germany on a, on a mission, and we will uh, uh, be hosted by German families. What is the name? What is the name of the municipality in Germany that you? Pardon? Get? What is the name of the municipality in Germany? Bramsche. It's uh, it's. I understand it is some kilometers from Munich. It's not a big city. And it's a, it's a joint joint city with Renana. Oh, with Renana, it's a joint the city with Renana. Yes. You see, I, 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 I must admit, I mean, the, the, the Germans don't, uh, don't run away from the Holocaust. Yeah. I mean, uh, they did, uh, I, when I went to Germany the first time, they took, I went to, uh, to the uh, Platform 17 in, in, in Berlin, from where they took the Jews to the concentration camps, and there is a memorial there. And the, there are, of course, you know, you, there are the uh, iron plates on the near the houses where Jews lived, yeah, yeah. with the name of the in, in, in on the pavements yeah. where the Jews lived, and and uh, so it's. Uh, I'm asked, you see, I I don't I don't forgive them, and I never become really friends with them, but. Uh, the, 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 the present generations, they're not to blame. Yeah, absolutely, that's true. You yeah, see, and, they, and I understand that they're helping Israel also, the German government. 
not like the Poles now, the new, <laughs> the new, new uh, law Legi in Poland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you heard it as a stamp, you've been a stamp collector for many years. And, um, no, letters. Letters, but letters. personal history. Personal. And uh, in November, we're having a joint, um, Germany's invited Israel to uh, a joint national exhibition. And it will be amazing because, please God, you'll be exhibiting there. Yeah. So it's like a circle, a complete circle. But um, I just want to ask, and I'm sure our listeners would be very interested to find out, when you went to Germany, was it very difficult to, no. to go? No, it was, it, was, it, it, was, I, it, it was really interesting because I felt at home there. And I tried to understand it. And because the, 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 our home in, in, in Israel, first in Palestine, then in Israel, was a German home. I mean, all the friends of my, my parents German. Were, were German Jews. Did uh, you speak the, German? The culture, you yes, spoke we German spoke German. We spoke German at home. Uh, the culture was German. I was educated with... Uh, with, with uh, I had to read the classical German writers. Uh, like Schiller, like Goethe, and uh, of course we, I was taken to concerts, Mozart and others. That's what makes it so difficult, because Germany was possibly the most cultural... Y yes, in Europe. In Europe, and right. to have had such a devastation, such a total annihilation of, yeah, it, from it, the most cultured people in Europe. Right. It, this is, my, mo this is my, my mother ne ne never overcame overcome it. She never overcame it. She had the trauma for that. It's, it's, it's a question that it's, it's still it's impossible to understand. Such a cultured nation with, with, with the, the greatest musicians and Poets and writers yeah, yeah. could have performed the most despicable acts to try and annihilate the Jewish people. It's, yeah. it's unfathomable. It, it's, it's but in a way, if you think about it, there is, uh, there is something <laughs> which is fate, I think. I mean, Einstein and Oppenheimer, the two inventors of the atomic bomb, they were driven out on, from Germany. They lived in Germany. They were German yeah. Jews. Yeah. Now imagine if Hitler was wouldn't draw, drive them away because they were Jewish. The Germans would have had the atomic power, and they would rule the world today. It's a, it's a different angle looking at, at history. You see, you've got a point. You've got a. And it was very and 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 I came to think about it when Paris was talking to the German Reich. And he asked them, what did Hitler wanted with the Jews? I mean, there were so famous Jewish people in, in Germany who contributed to German culture and knowledge and science. Freud, Einstein, uh, Rosa Luxemburg, uh, who else? Uh, there, there, were, there were many, many, many others. In other words, in, in all fields, in musicians. In, in, in all, and, yeah, in, in all fields. So, but uh, maybe this is something, it's, it, it's difficult to understand. It's and if difficult. you look at the percentage of Jews compared to the German nation, it was a very low percentage. There, there, weren't, there weren't over a million German Jews. The percentage no. was much less. It was yeah. a couple of hundred thousand out of a population of over 44 million. Yeah. So, wow, but um, Yuna, it's you've been through your journey is it's, it's really you are an example of um, of Jewish history, really, you you epitomize what yeah, happened well, to our people, yeah. a survivor. Thank God your 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 parents had the had the foresight that they had the insight to see that that they must leave that they took their advice. Yeah, my they, father they saw it. Uh, my, my father saw it too. When the the law came out that Jewish doctors are not allowed to practice and uh, receive German Gentiles patients, 
that came out, the law came out, I don't know, 1936, 1937. I think this is when he started to put money here in the bank in Palestine in order to, yeah. to, to buy the certificates. He understood that this is the beginning of the end. And it's actually quite sad to think that a piece of paper, certificate, that certificate to enter Palestine, that the British only issued very few of them, yeah. saved you and you sitting here today because of that certificate. Mm -hmm. And if there wouldn't have been the white paper and they would have allowed immigration. Right. Uh, so yeah, many, because they... Uh, so many Jews would have survived and we wouldn't have had the... Total destruction. Yeah, because, be, because they, 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 had, they had the Arab population here, which was against the immigration. But and if you, if you really read the Balfour Declaration, and you don't just take out what's convenient for you, what he said, what the Declaration said, is that the British government favors the creation of a Jewish home in Palestine, but not harming the local, op uh, or something like that, harming yeah. or disturbing the local inhabitants of the land. But so this, this is what we don't want to hear. I know, but you, heard it, you know what the sad thing with the, the Balfour Declaration was at a time when there were British, it was Lord Balfour, there was Lord Joy, there were, there were young smuts from South Africa, there were tremendous Philo non-Jews, people that, that were very pro-Jewish, pro, -Jewish, pro Zionist as well. Yeah. And it was a time that unfortunately today, just in the news today, the the Labour Party here in Israel has broken off ties with the British Labour Party because of the leader mm -hmm. of the Labour Party in England is so anti Semitic. What's so sad about the Balfour Declaration is that they did nothing really to to fulfill their promise of to help create a Jewish homeland. Yeah, very little. They actually very went different. against that by by issuing the white paper, then right. by not allowing or very limited, extremely limited. Yeah, because the Arab, the, the interest in, in the Arab oil, yeah. the Arab oil, yeah. and 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 the British, uh, they didn't like the jewels so much. The funny thing is that the first money which I made as a boy was from British officers. Why? <laughs> Because next to our home, there was a tennis court in Weisel Street in Tel Aviv, where the British officers came to play. And I, uh, I went there and became the bellboy. And I collected from the nets. I collected and the, the balls, balls and, and gave them. Wow. And they gave me tip. And this is, this is the first money I ever made. I think it was eight, I was eight or nine years old at the time. So you are actually a, an example of, I mean, you've lived here before the state was established, when right. the state was established. Right. Do you remember May 1948 when the, when the, the yes. when Ben Gurion declared? Yes. And you remember it well? I remember that very well. I, I, what I most remember, I don't know if you don't know the story of the weapon ship Altalena. Sure. You sure. know it. If you could just mention it for our listeners, but... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, I, all the kids from... Uh, when, when the ship was shot by the... Uh, Ben-Gurion called it the, the, the holy, holy Cannon, and rightly, because there couldn't be another army in the army. I mean, you had to have one army. And I have two things I want to, re to, to tell you. All the kids, like a flock of... I don't know, of, uh, <laughs> of locust. We went to the ship, it was still burning, to take out weapons. And uh, for many years I had with me, uh, it was a Czech, a Czech uh, rifle, which was the, the wooden parts burned away. So I had the, 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 um, the framework, the, and the, the, the metal parts of the, of the, of the gun, of the, of the rifle. And I kept it for many years as a, as, as a souvenir. You still have it? No, because in one of, I, I lost it some, some, some time when we to, went from one, when, from one flat to another flat, etc., etc., during our lifetime, it disappeared. 
But I will never forget the speech of Begin. This is Menachem Begin. Of Menachem Begin. I, he was very the theatrical, theatrical. And his speech was fantastic about uh, when, 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 when the ship was burning and, and the way he described the whole, uh, the whole idea of, of bringing, bringing the weapons to, to Israel for the fight of independence and what has happened to it. And also there were some uh, people on the ship or soldiers, Etzel, volunteers who died. Yeah. It's a sad story. This I remember from 1948. And you actually saw the ship? You, you remember yeah, seeing it? Yeah, we, I went on the ship to take out the guns. How, how close was it to the beachfront? Oh, you could walk. You don't have to swim. It was marooned on the, in, into the sand. So you heard I'm going to just mention, and I think our listeners will be interested, in our, in our Beit Knesset, in our synagogue in Beit Vagan, we had a uh, Bar Mitzvah. Um, it was a celebration. And in our show, we had one of the people that came from America was originally on that ship. Oh, uh, yeah. Metzel. But in our show as well, we also had somebody that lived in my street in Rehoboziel that was part of um, ben Gurion's, the, the Palmach, Palmach. That, that was there shooting the ship. So we had in the same synagogue somebody who was on the ship and somebody who was shooting yeah. at the ship. And when I, when I spoke to the person who was shooting at the ship, he really believed that it was a purge, that they had come to cause a coup d'etat, a coup. And that's till this very day, he felt that that ship no. was, uh, they brought weapons to to cause a coup d'etat. Well, this I don't, I don't believe that. And many I people think... don't, but that's what he still believed. And I mentioned to him that no, I don't think. And he really, till I think, till he was, till he passed away, that was his belief, and that were justified. He felt they were justified in shooting the ship. Well, but I, I think that. Uh, they were what, given, they were, what Begin wanted, he wanted that the, the, they will call the the, the Herut underground, the yeah, underground, underground. Of the, and, and, and the people who were on the ship and the weapons will be kept as special units, divided from yeah. the Israeli army, the, under his command. This is what he wanted. And, but Ben Gurion didn't allow that. He said that they're going to be one when, uh, army which is responsible to the the government. But I think we I'm and saying, and this is why also yeah. the the Palmach was was uh, taken. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Palmach also was taken out. Okay. Uh, I think uh, for our listeners, at this time when the Altalina came, the British had they forbade. The, the Jews to have arms and they would go yes. to the kibbutzim and they'd confiscate the arms and um, it was very difficult because how were you going to protect yourself and when there were riots and the British were very strong and they were very determined to prohibit any Jewish defense force or underground movement yeah, so I know, it was a very complicated situation it was a very complicated but you know it's probably the communists helped us I mean the the Czechs yeah, yeah the Czechs, the, the, that the, Czechs the Czechs sent sent weapons they sent weapons and they, they sent the the airplanes which were sent in, in boxes, uh, the right. parts of the aeroplanes, right. and some of them were German aeroplanes. Yes. And that was the very first, um, the very first aeroplane for the yes. Israeli Air Force were, came from Czech, from Czechoslovakia. Right. Yeah. Because they wanted to have influence in the Middle East. I mean, the, the communists, the, 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 it's the Russians, because the Russians ruled Czechoslovakia at the time. Yeah. That is. Uh, <laughs> But uh, there were uh, there were enough weapons, all the you know, in all houses, in 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 in, in storehouses, in yards. I mean, they, they they were concealed. But I think the most important Stored lesson away. that I learned and I, uh, was from the Altalina is the courageous Menachem Begin who prevented a civil war. Yes, 
And they yes. really could have had yes, the did. civil this war. This is said in his. In and his, he prevented a civil he, war. Yes, he, this is this he did. He did say that, that he accepts, the in 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 his fantastic speech he accepts the sovereignty of the state and of Ben Gurion, and therefore he will not. Make a take revenge, or or whatever. Take revenge yeah. yeah. And you, you remember the war of independence and all yeah, the and yeah. all the wars. I mean, you've lived through. Yeah. You've lived through momentous times in Jewish history. Yeah. You've lived through. Yeah, the I was Shoah. fourteen, fifteen years of age then. And you remember the the hardships, and the, the where there weren't food rations, and there was nothing here. Yeah, <laughs> of course, you got uh, yeah what. You got uh, to 200 grams of meat for a family for a week or whatever. I mean, that's it. There was nothing here. And a lot of immigrants came. This is why. Remember, when the state was founded, there were only 600,000 Jews here. And luckily, the Arab leadership made the big mistake of not accepting the partition. No, they never. They they refused. They refused. They thought that they can throw us to to the sea, into and, the sea. And you when did you join the army? Uh, in nineteen fifty two. Wow. But before that, we had training as youth, the the youth uh, youth contingents, Gadna, do they know? And. Uh, you know, there was such a shortage of, of weapon to t weapons to teach us that we, we, we started to learn to shoot with the air rifles, you know, the air rifles with the small bullets. And also we learned, the, the, the Arabs did use it uh, 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 when they didn't have arms. Uh, Naput, Nabut, it's called in Arabic. It's a very uh, heavy stick. And you, 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 we learn to defend yourself like that, wow. and to hit back with sticks. Wow. And you heard of, what did you do after you finished, after you matriculated, after you finished school? Uh, you see, uh, at that time, the, although my father practices as in Kupat Cholim as a doctor, salaries were very low, and uh, so I had to work during the day. And I studied economics in the evening in the University of Tel Aviv. It wasn't easy because I had to go for, uh, by bus from the place I worked as a clerk from one end of the, the city to the other. And we started at 6, at 10 o'clock we finished at night and I had to go home. It wasn't easy, but this was life. This was life. I'm telling this to my, even to my daughters. <laughs> Oh, my grandchildren, they, they think that I'm from another planet. <laughs> wow. Now the kids. But, uh, but there was a, a idealism. Um, there were, of course, there were a few rich people, but most people were all on the, economically on the same level, more or less. And you remember very well 1967? Nineteen six, the six day war before the yeah, six day war. Yeah, sixty seven, yes, yes. When I remember fear, that. That was that was a miracle because uh, people thought this was the end. The end we thought it. it's the end. I mean even General Dayan said that is the destruction of the third temple yeah. of the third uh, Hoban of, of the third house, Hoban Bait. We, we, uh, yeah. yeah. Even Dayan. Because it looked very bad. They all they had they had all the Russian armaments, the Russian T T sixty two tanks, and that that was uh, the Air Force did it because it was very clever to to start a preventive the, the pre pre strike. preventive yeah. Yeah, preemptive strike, and we caught most of their airplanes on the ground, and once you control the air, you could then knock out the tanks. And can we mention on video what you did uh, in the army? Your yes, yes. I, I was in, you see, because I'm physically, I'm healthy, but I'm not a, 
and my, my uh, hobby was photography. So I was in the interpretation of aerial photographs, or what they mean, in the intelligence. And I did it uh, during my three years of service, and then as a reservist. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, it was interesting. You have to interpret it, what, what, uh, what you see in the, in, the, in the photo. Is it a, a, a gun site? Is it nothing? Is it a store? Is it a bombing uh, store? Whatever. We have, uh, yeah. So Yehuda, it's really been such an honor and a privilege to sit and to know you. Somebody who's actually witnessed, I mean, you lived through, although you were in Israel, thank God, and you went to Germany, but you were saved from the total destruction of European Jewry during the Holocaust. You saw the British here in Palestine. Right. The uh, partition plan that never came into being, mm -hmm. but then you saw mm -hmm. the War of Independence and three wars, and you yeah. saw and you fought, you fought in the wars, and you saw the establishment of the State of Israel. I mean, you have seen the most momentous. You have lived through the moment, most momentous times in Jewish history. Right. It's you. Modern are, modern Jewish history. More than world history as well. Yeah, modern world history as well. Yeah. So it really is, it's been a tremendous honor and a privilege to, to speak to you and to no hear problem. your... I don't feel like that, but... To uh, hear your incredible and amazing story, really, that is such an inspiration to all of us. You heard you should just be blessed with, and maybe stream until 120 years of health, happiness thanks. that you really deserve. And um, I just want to mention, your parents did the right decision, thank God, by coming here. Today they look. You have a family here. You've got grandchildren, right? And uh, thank God, your father and your mother d took the had the initiative and had the the, the, the wisdom to listen to the advice of right. your yeah. father's patient to the SS and to leave. And uh, they established a, a home here in Israel. All that was very difficult, and look at the results. They'd be very proud of you and your achievements, here, <laughs> as we all are. So we just wish yeah. you all of Hashem's blessings, all of God's blessings, and Thanks to be very much. healthy and happy and have nachat and just muzzle and brocha always. Well, it was nice talking to you and, and I really appreciate it. Are you going to make a CD out?